Hey guys, so we're going to be working on some uh, photos today. I'm going to do a little bit of editing, kind of show you a bit of my process. But first, let's rewind to uh, last night there. All right, well, I'm actually out here after a day at work, so uh, I'm feeling energized. Uh, I'm going to get out down to the river and see what we find for photos tonight. Uh, hopefully, I can see some cool animals. was really cool. I got a green herring immediately as soon as I got on the path. I managed to get some video. It was all handheld, so hopefully I can stabilize it a little bit and it's usable footage. I think my settings were okay. And uh, and then I got some photos, which I think the photos are a little iffy because I was shooting through the tree, like I showed you in the one clip there. So it was pretty difficult to uh, to get a nice sharp photo, but we'll see. It was still really cool to see them like that. Nice. This uh, green heron's just not giving up. He's kind of far away now, but I mean, honestly, just kind of enjoying watching him fish around. I'm just sitting here patiently waiting to see if he comes through here. They're literally so stealthy this entire time. He's been right in front of me. All right, back to the photos. All right, I'm heading back home. Pretty successful night with the uh, with the green heron at least, which was awesome. All right, I got all the photos loaded up on my computer. The first thing I'm gonna do is open up one of these images in DxO. All right, I was shooting in low light, so in this photo, my ISO was set to 5,000. You can see the rest of my settings all down here at the bottom. Here's the photo before any processing. If we zoom in and pixel peep a little bit, we can see the noise caused by a higher ISO. It's not too bad, but we're gonna let this program clean it up for us. So the first thing we're gonna do is right click, select process raw photo to JPEG or DNG. Most of the time I select the third option for the method here, right here, it's called deep prime. I use this option anytime I have a photo shot in low light with softer lighting, nothing too harsh. And uh, it's basically just the program's most advanced denoising option. Uh, under optical corrections, I'm only going to have the global lens sharpening turned on. I don't always use this, but I'm gonna leave it on this time. And I don't typically ever use the lens distortion correction because I can just do that myself in Lightroom. The output format is gonna be a DNG. Uh, simply because that is a raw file. It's going to give us the most information in the image so that we can stretch the highlights and shadows and hopefully get more out of the file. I'm gonna click process here and it'll just take a few seconds on my computer. All right, and it's done processing. So I'm gonna select view results here uh, and basically just compare the before and after. And we'll take a quick look at this before I transfer it over to Lightroom and do an edit. And if we uh, really zoom in here, we can see that all that noise has been washed away. Uh, the image has been sharpened a little bit. It's not too bad. It's not like perfectly tack sharp, but it's a pretty decent image. And if we pull it back, it'll look great. And here's a slow pass by. And one more slow pass by zoomed in close to the, to the green heron. All right, I'm gonna bring this over to Lightroom and let's get working on an edit for it. NVIDIA Shadowplay, whatever the name has changed to, will not record anything on Lightroom for me. 
There seems to be some kind of copywriting issue there. So I'm using a free screen recorder, which hopefully will look okay and work okay. And uh, we're just gonna do a quick edit on this photo here. So I'm gonna choose a five by seven, make this an Instagram post. Around there looks okay. Bring up the exposure so we can actually see what we're doing. And the first thing I wanna do is uh, I want to select the subject by creating a new mask right under this option. That's gonna automatically draw a mask around the bird here that we can touch up with the subtract option here. So I'm gonna take out the rock that automatically I hope I'm still recording right now. My computer is like starting to roar. And so we're just gonna lightly touch this up. Just around the edges. You don't have to be too precise. You do have to be careful not to get any haloing if you're going to separately brighten the bird. Now that we've masked our bird, subtracted anything extra that got masked, we can now just control the bird separately. So I'm gonna bring him up a little bit, bring the overall exposure back down, and then that way we can kind of balance out the bird a little bit. There we are. All right, so now I'm just gonna do some generalized changes, bring the shadows down, going to affect the bird a little bit and affect this background. I'd like to kind of keep that dark. Bring up the whites a little bit. And I just want to give this the feeling of being just a little bit warmer, like there's some warm sunshine coming down at the end of the night. The forest in behind has started to darken out. Okay, so I want to create a new mask with a brush. And I just want to kind of like highlight these rocks that are a little closer to the foreground, I suppose, and edit them separately. Make them pop a little less. And we'll bring the temperature down just a little bit. So what we could do, uh, I'm just curious, select the subject again, and I'm going to add a brush to it. And I'm just gonna roughly there we go, reselect that. Roughly select this rocky area that is in the same focal area, if that's the right word, as the bird. And there we go, and we'll see what that does. So I just want to warm that area up just a bit more, nothing too crazy. Saturation looks good. It's a pretty basic edit. Here's uh, here's before. And here's after. 